Today, we are gonna be talking all about public service loan forgiveness, how it works, all the details. Hi, I'm Tasha. And I'm Joseph from One Big Happy Life. We make videos about how to find balance, build wealth, and live happy. So if you want more videos about how to create the life that you want on your own terms, this is the place to be. Subscribe and hit that notification bell. So today's video is all about public service loan forgiveness. And a lot of you, this is a highly requested video because we are pursuing public service loan forgiveness. We post our net worth updates. We always mention public service loan forgiveness and the number of payments that we have left. And people are like, but the news though, did you read the articles though? Yeah, there's a <laughs> lot of misinformation out there, which makes sense because that's what's creating the bad press, the misinformation. So we wanna mm -hmm. try to clear you know, at least a little bit of that up. Yeah, and it's probably gonna take two videos. This video is going to get deep into the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program and how it works to help you understand how the program works. And then I think we're gonna have to do a separate video so that we're not overwhelming you with too much information in one video where we talk about some of the common misconceptions that we see online. So the first thing that you need to understand when it comes to student loans is that student loans are a type of debt. And debt is created by a contract that outlines the terms of that debt, which includes how much you owe, the interest rate you're going to pay, the required number of payments, and sometimes your payment amount. Now, in this case, your master promissory note, which is the instrument, the debt instrument that creates the debt for your student loans, it doesn't list the loan payment because you're constantly getting new loans every single year as you're going through school. What happens though is that in the master promissory note, it talks about the different repayment options and the, the different methods that you can use to pay back your loans and how the loan payments will be calculated when you finally go into repayment. Now that we understand that student loans are debt, I wanna talk about the two major types of student loans. You've got private student loans and federal student loans. A private student loan is a loan that you'll get from a private lender, like a bank. You'd go to them directly, they'd check out your credit, and then they would give you the money or more likely give it directly to your school. It's basically kind of like getting a mortgage. It's the same thing where you'd go to a private lender and borrow money. The second type of student loan is a federal student loan. And even within this category, there have been multiple programs over the years. So they used to be, prior to 2010, FFEL was the main program. And the way that this worked is the federal government would guarantee the loan and not actually do the lending. You'd still go to a private lender like a bank but the student loan from them would be guaranteed by the federal government. So if you defaulted and weren't making your payments, the federal government would come in, they'd pay off your loan to the private lender. And then and come the after you for the money. <laughs> yeah. So to give you a concrete example, when I was an undergrad, I had FFEL loans and Perkins loans. Perkins loans are actually loans that are issued by your school specifically. But the FFEL loans, again, were issued by the federal government. So those were my, my Stafford loans, the subsidized and unsubsidized loans that I took out in undergrad. In order to get those loans, I went to my bank, which was Navy Federal, and I said, hey, I need a student loan. And I think that they kind of subcontracted it through Great Lakes or something like that. But then Great Lakes would give me the money that was used to pay my tuition and would get reimbursed to me and I squandered it on all sorts of dumb things. But Navy Federal was like my servicer, but ultimately they were federal loans that I qualified for based on my FAFSA. So they were federal financial aid. Now, since 2010, the FFEL program has been eliminated. Now, all the student loans, all the federal student loans, are issued directly by the Department of Education. And so now they are the largest student loan lender and have a gigantic portfolio. So they're actually giving that money to you or to your school directly. So an example of that, well, when I was in law school, and the time came for me to take out the massive loans that I took out for law school, they were all direct loans. So I didn't have to go to a bank to get that loan to get that loan or apply for that loan. I just signed my master promissory note and the federal government issued my loans to my law school and then they, whatever was left over after tuition for my living expenses, they gave to me 
to live on during the course of the semester. Now that you know what student loans are and the two types, the private and federal loans, we are going to talk about the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program, which only applies to the federal loans. And like we mentioned, all of your debts, including your student loans, were created by a note. In this case, with federal loans, they're called master promissory notes. And public service loan forgiveness is an actual term within your master promissory note. So it's something that's written down as a way of repaying that debt. So it is a repayment option. Public service loan forgiveness provides for your loan to be discharged. So that means wiped out, you know, completely taken off the books after 120 on time and full payments while being employed by a qualifying employer. So what that means is in order to qualify for public service loan forgiveness, you need to have federal loans. They need to be federal direct loans. You need to work for a qualifying employer and you need to make 120 on time payments. Full, full payments too. To qualify for the program, the loans must be federal student loans. If you've got private student loans, those will not qualify. Secondly, the type of federal loan matters. It must be a direct student loan. So if you have a student loan from a, the previous program, the FFEL program, or a Perkins loan, those by themselves do not qualify. Fortunately, you can consolidate those loans into a direct loan, which means you take the existing loans that you have and apply to the Department of Education for a direct loan, they pay off those old loans and give you a new master promissory note. Now, the one caveat is that not everyone is eligible to refinance their loans into direct consolidation loans. We're not gonna go into the details of that, but just understand that if you have, you have to meet certain criteria in order to be able to consolidate. So that's why people who have much, much older federal student loans do not qualify for public service loan forgiveness because they don't have direct they don't have any direct loans and they don't have the ability to consolidate into direct loans because they don't qualify for the consolidation. So now let's talk about working for an eligible employer. So you must work for an eligible employer. And here's the list. Federal, state, local, or tribal government, excluding members of Congress, public child or family services agencies, a 50c3 nonprofit organization, tribal or public colleges and universities, public schools, the military, full-time AmeriCorps positions, and also organizations that provide the following services, provided the employer is not organized for profit, is not a labor union, a partisan political organization, or an organization engaged in religious activities, unless the qualifying activities are unrelated to the religious instruction. So that would be emergency management, military service, public safety, law enforcement, public interest law services, early childhood education, public service for the elderly or individuals with disabilities, public education, public library, or other public school-based services. So you must make, you must work for one of those. That was a long and complicated list, which is why I read it straight from the computer. So you must work for one of those qualifying organizations and you need to make 120 payments and you have to work full time right? So there, there are a lot of stipulations in there. And then also those payments to add another layer of complexity, you'll have to be on a qualifying loan repayment plan. Because if you're on the standard plan, you will pay your loans off in 10 years. That's the standard repayment plan. So then you won't end up getting anything forgiven. So you have to be on basically an income driven plan, which puts your payments at less than they would have been to pay them off in 10 years. So the other important thing is that they have to be individual payments. You cannot prepay, which really came back to bite me in the butt because I didn't realize this. So in the beginning, I would pay three, four or five months at a time all at once in lump sum. And then I wouldn't make a payment again for another four or five months. Well, guess how many payments that was? One payment. It was so frustrating. So I lost almost a year's worth of payments just because I didn't know that. And you do have to make payments. So if you go into forbearance, if you're in deferment, those things do not count. You lose that time. So if say your servicer messes up your student loan 
um, payment plan paperwork, which has happened to us over and over. Anytime you're not making the required payments, which will end up oft sometimes end up defaulting back to the standard repayment amount, that time doesn't count either. So it's really easy to get a whole bunch of missed time. So you end up working way more than those 10 years that you hear all the time. It's not 10 years, it is 120 qualifying payments. And after you're done making the payments and actually apply for the forgiveness, you must still be working for a qualifying mm -hmm. employer when you ultimately get forgiveness. And it's not an instant thing based on what we've been seeing. There's gonna be a little bit of a delay. So if you made your 120th payment and then quit your job, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. You're gonna to have to go find another qualifying employer. But as you can see, there are many, many requirements and they're very specific, which is why there is so much bad press and why so many people were rejected the first time around because they thought that they were doing the right thing, but they were not playing by these rules. They or they hoped. To. They may not have even thought it. So that's the thing we often respond with when people are like, oh, all these people are getting denied. And the thing, the scenario that we like to use is, would a 70 year old be concerned about social security if every 35 year old in the United States started applying for social security and was getting denied? Would they be worried about the denial rates? No, because 35 year olds aren't eligible for social security. And so the problem is we have a lot of people that would love to have their student loans forgiven. I don't blame them at all, I would too. But the fact is they just don't qualify. Either they have private loans, they have the wrong type of federal loans, they don't qualify for a direct consolidation loan, they're in the wrong type of employment, or they haven't made those 120 qualifying payments because only payments made after October 2007 count anyway. So the earliest that anyone could have been eligible was I think October 2017. Mm -hmm. And so that's, if you did everything right, if you like dotted all your I's and crossed all your T's, then lucky you, October 2017, you're eligible. But the reality is most of us experience some amount of delays. Some people are like me, they go in and out of public service. And so that means that it's going to take more than just the 10 years. Now you might be seeing in the media big pushes to pay off your student loans as fast as possible. And so the idea of not paying them off as fast as possible and using public service loan forgiveness might seem a little unusual to you. But there are major benefits to public service loan forgiveness. So because the payments are based on your income, they will be manageable or more manageable at least. And so that means that you'll have more money to do other things like building wealth. And of course, federal student loans, like let's say if you die, they go away. And so if you had paid them off very, very fast, then you'd just be out that money and then your children don't have the wealth that you could have accumulated in the meantime. And by go away, he means specifically they are discharged. They no longer exist. They are forgiven, discharged, gone. And we talked about this in a recent video we did where we talked about what would happen to our kids if we died. And we showed kind of the value of our estate and you know where things would go if we died. And keeping that in mind, and because we have children that are you know our dependents that depend on us, we would much rather have that money, the money that we would have spent paying off our student loans available for our children if we died, knowing that those student loans will get discharged anyway. Now to bring this all back full circle to the very beginning, back to your student loans being a debt, that debt being formed by a contract, which is the master promissory note, and that master promissory note including public service loan forgiveness as a repayment option within the note that formed your debt, it is just not true that someone you know, like the president of the United States could just snap a finger and it just disappears because there's contract law that can help us with that. So all of those concerns about it just being able to disappear and be backdated, I will say, first of all, no one's ever suggested that. No president ever, including Trump, has ever said, I'm going to retroactively get rid of public service loan forgiveness because they know they're gonna have a hard time. 
But what they have done is said for brand new borrowers, people who have not entered into that contract with us, we're going to change the terms going forward. That makes sense. The government is at liberty to do that. So what you'll need to do is just kind of stay apprised. If you're a new borrower, you've never taken out any loans, your kids are getting ready to go to school, keep track of what's going on with public service loan forgiveness because it very well may disappear. But for the people who are current borrowers who are already in the program, already working those jobs, already submitting their certifications, no one has ever at all even mentioned, hinted at trying to eliminate it for current participants. Yeah, so it's basically impossible. So whenever you see that in the news, and it will be there, just kind Ignore of it. know know in your mind what, what it actually means. They're not saying it's going back. So. All right, so we know you probably still have questions and we're, we're betting we're gonna have to do a follow-up video. So questions, drop us the comments down below and we will make sure to get to those in our next public service loan for forgiveness video. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.